Got a little bit of a problem. Something that I was kind of thinking might happen. This guy here makes it so that I cannot cut and clear the blade completely an eight foot piece. That fence right there is in the spot where I could basically clear the blade and end up with about an inch of room. Of course, I don't have to clear the blade to cut a piece, which, you know, clearly that's not the most important thing, but let me just show you. So we got this thing set up. I went ahead and put the, obviously the fence on it and whatnot. Um, let's take a look here. So as I come all the way through and I want to complete the cut, you can see right there. So it, it clears the blade, it blades all the way up and I've got about an inch or so. And we are, yeah, we, another half inch and we'd hit the wall. The maximum cut on this saw is 10 and a half feet. If I position the fence all the way. The problem is in the position that that fence is right now, I don't want to have to open up the garage to cut every eight foot board that I, you know, cut on this thing. That's just not what I want to be doing. So what do I have to do in order for this to work? I have two choices. One is if I remove this guy and get rid of it, then I can have everything set up right now and it will be fine. I just won't have this handle, so I would have to theoretically create some sort of a back plate there and add a little handle. Or the other option is to just open up the garage door every time I want to make uh, an eight foot cut. So this is kind of the predicament that I'm in. I'm just going to remove this guy and figure out a way to create maybe some sort of a thin piece of wood to cover this back up and then put a handle on it something like that. Um, I believe I'll have enough room to not have to open up the garage door to make all my eight foot cuts. To me, it's actually a waste of space uh, in my shop um, because it does take up extra room and I don't necessarily think it's uh, critical to have. If it works well, I will make it out of a different material. I wanna see how thin I can make it because the thinner, the better. You know what tool is great for this? My 14 inch bandsaw that I put out in the back shed. Right, now let's check it out. Okay, so perfect. So now I can go ahead and cut that out. This works well. I'll have a template. Of course, I could always make this out of steel or aluminum. This is obviously going to be a little tricky to cut out. Just gonna have to take my time and make the cut as best I can. I'm not sure about this part here. This is the part that is right there. And I don't know if I'm gonna need that or not. I'll probably end up just cutting right there. Okay, you guys remember me saying it would probably be nice to have my 14 inch bandsaw. Well, unfortunately I don't right now. So I'm gonna use my 16 inch with the um, wood slicer three-quarter inch resaw blade and actually I Would have thought it would have been much more difficult to use this blade. However You know just check watch out how I do it. I'm just nibbling away and I make a lot of relief cuts to make this work so if you have a wide blade like this and it's not made for this type of cutting uh, you can make it work maybe um, it may not be as smooth, but it definitely works. So I'm just taking my time and I'm following my outlines and trying to get into these tight spaces as best I can, knowing that I can sand a lot of things if they're not good. So here's a close up of me nibbling away. So this speed right here is twice the speed, if you wondered. Um, it's not too bad. That cleaned up nicely. The sander's going to really refine it though when it's all done. Okay, let's move on to the sanding. Now you can see I'm using my brand new um, shop modification sanding center here. And this is really nice. It's coming in handy. So basically what I want to do is just carefully refine all these edges. Um, the saw did a good job, but it left a pretty, you know, 
pretty decently rough surface and uneven, so I'm just trying to make it as smooth as possible. The bigger diameter was okay, but I'm going to switch to the smaller one for these little half circles. Anything I can't do with the drum sander, I'm going to do with my block sander. And this is great because I can get the flat spots really flat and um, carefully ease all the edges. This comes out really good. After the drill press is done, um, all these holes are finished and I use a backer board to protect the back. As you can see, it came out really nice. I sanded that flat edge right there using this sander. I shut it off, pivoted it in, started it, sanded it, shut it off, took it out. So that's pretty cool. It's not perfect. I mean, you know, you can see where I nibbled away with the bandsaw here, but it's pretty darn good. And this is just going to be like a, you know, one of those things where I'm just going to try it and see if it works. Let's go put it on. I'm going to have to loosen the nut up on the other side to pull this. So I put a little mark where the, the grid is and I'm just kind of staying clear of that with the screws. Drill those two holes for the handle. The two bolts that come with it aren't long enough. So I dug in my um, drawer with all my goodies found some metric actually uh, guys there and actually it looks really good I mean it looks like you I mean it's gonna look very nice literally two I found two nuts that work with this <laughs> so I sanded this it looks really good all right so my guess is that I'll probably end up painting that guy uh, the white to match this um, I already painted these before and the um, I used a rasp in there with some sandpaper uh, but mostly a rasp um, to get in there let's check to see if it works all right this is the all-important test let's see if it um, clears the blade so we're good we clear everything ah we got it it works. It's nice to have a little extra room. I need it. I'm just uh, excited that I was able to get this to work. To match everything else, I just decided to go ahead and put a couple coats of primer on it. And I will follow it up with the finished color and then clear coat it at the end. It's gonna look great. Yeah, nice, looks good. Definitely looks, I mean, really from here, it looks almost factory. So that's pretty cool. Plastic uh, guards like this, clear plastic guards, tend to have static buildup uh, after a while. And to reduce that, what I'm doing is putting on some uh, glass and plastic uh, static reducer uh, cleaner. This works really well. And it's not only good on this, but it also works on my um, drum of my dust collector, where the uh, plexiglass insert that I put in there sometimes gets stuck with static and you can't see inside the drum. So um, if you're having problems with static electricity, use this on your plastic. Okay, brought in some reinforcements for the next um, modification. This one happens to be for the outfeed table. As you remember, it's a little too tall. So what I need to do is take off the wheels first. I need to lift this guy up so I can get at the wheels and then I can trim off the, um, the legs, basically. Um, in order to do that, I need, need to know how much to take off, so I'm just using my tape measure. So that's like 37 and a half inches. And if I look at the table saw, of course it's in different positions, it's gonna be a different height, but I can, um, I can essentially take off one and a half inches, and that should give me plenty of room to shim up to the table saw surface. 
So I just took my square, set it at one and a half, and drew a line. I'm going to carefully cut that out with my jigsaw. This is why I had to remove the wheels. Okay, I'm going to put leveling feet on this guy. I decided that since I can't find uh, leveling feet that I like at the box store, and I'm not going to wait for a mail order, I decided to make my own. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm using a half inch by three inch carriage bolt, pretty heavy duty. And what I've done is I have a big washer here and a big washer on the top so that when I put this down and the cabinet needs to be up, raised up or lowered, all I have to do is raise and lower this guy right here. Turn this guy and it will raise it up or turn it to the left and it'll drop the whole uh, cabinet down. Um, so I didn't use threaded inserts or anything. It's just a half inch hole. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna drill right in there. So if I put it here, it would be a little flexible, although it would still be strong. It's gonna be much stronger in the corner. Uh, I just wanna make sure that I can turn my bolt. Another thing I wanna do is make sure that when I drill it, my drill is nice and straight. It's not crooked. definitely a good idea to have this cabinet up like this otherwise it'd be tough to get at okay the feet are working great um, I only this one is my only concern I think um, I need to drop this in down, and I don't know if I can because of the way the, um, the nut is with the uh, washer. But first, I'm going to go ahead and raise this end up just to see. You can see it's pretty, um, it's pretty significant, right? I need to raise that up about a three quarters of an inch that side and about five eighths of an inch here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then do this part. To speed up the process, I'm going to go ahead and put these big shims. Basically, I'll just tap it until the um, levels get hit or close to it, and then I'll fine tune it with the bolts. All right, I want to go until there's no more rock. So basically, I'm a little bit low up the front, and I'm low here. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up with my wrench just turn that bottom nut all right that's actually really good right there things leveled out pretty good uh, now one thing i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to change this piece of wood and i'm going to make it a little bit different shape. So I'm not going to totally dial this in. I just want to get it really, really close. Um, ideally, I want this piece to be so close that all it's going to take is just a little fine tuning when I get the actual piece. Check this out. I had to take out the bolt. I had to take it out because the carriage bolt, everything was just a little too thick. I was, um, I was like an eighth of an inch or so too uh, tall. Undid the bolt, took it out, and then um, put it back down. And it, I mean, I think I'm, it's like really close to being exactly perfect. So I'm going to say that's a win without using any shims. Isn't that crazy? So it just happens to be that that is the height. That guy has the um, shim underneath it. So what I'll do now is just take the bolt and then, um, you know, make it so that it's tight. That's really good. All right, so this thing, that's, that's really good. Dialed in, that's nice. When I switch this top out, obviously I'm gonna to have to adjust it. Right now, I'm going to trim off this to fill in that space. And um, when I get the new piece, the new worktop figured out as far as the size and everything, 
I'll do it again, but I want to make sure I close that space in. And now that's about four inches. My overhang is three and a half inches. So um, just under three and a half. What I did was I set my, um, I set this up for uh, three and seven sixteenths. So I'll pull this away, mark it, and then cut it with my uh, saw. This is one thing I want to make sure I do is um, bevel the edge. Okay, let me go ahead and get this thing back together. Um, everything's good. Okay, another issue that I was telling you about in order for this to pass through, I either have to move the workbench over to the left or notch this rail. I decided to add a rail at the bottom to keep it from spreading, just in case. I didn't glue it though, so I think I'm gonna ultimately put it up here. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this because this is glued and screwed, so I'm not really gonna have, have success trying to take that apart. I think it's gonna be easier just to um, cut it with the jigsaw right there. All right, in order to cut that second one out, I just pulled this whole thing out again. I don't know how many times I put it in and out, but it's a lot. Um, and I went ahead and just sanded this over here as well. We're good, now I can put this back and it pull this um, all the way out, so that's good. Okay, one more thing I need to do to my saw uh, is to um, put a stop where I think the factory should have had a stop, and that is at the eight foot mark. So when I open this up to eight foot, I can't lock it the way it is, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, it's only lockable at full extension and nesting in the normal position where it's not, um, you know, it's flush on each end. So in the home position, it locks, and it's uh, it locks on this device right here. Boom, 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 boom. I thought about making this, and I thought, why don't I just cut it, because I only use this one, I only use this one. I could just get rid of these and make, put this where I need it. And then I thought, why don't I just put a screw through here instead of putting a bracket? So I marked out where the, um, the, the little bar is. You can see the bar in there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but and it's actuated by the handle on the front. And that's where the, um, ultimately I want the carriage to stop. So my bolt needs to be in over in this area here. And I'm gonna use this uh, type of bolt so that it, um, you know, it'll stop and have. But first things first, let me measure again. I, I did already, but I'm gonna double check it. Right there. And this is just a threaded hole. It's not a big deal. All right, let's check to see how this works. All right, that's perfect. I'm right at my mark. I can't go any, I mean, I can just barely push it and it's, you know, pushing the garage door as I do that. That is awesome. Sweet. I did it. This is something I've been laboring over. Oh my gosh. I have to say that I think that was a great idea. So it hits this foam. It doesn't hit the steel, it doesn't hit that. I mean, everything is good. I am stoked. I'm absolutely stoked. Okay, I went ahead and put um, the second one in here. So now my pin is sandwiched. And when I come in, when I lock it in like that, it's locked in. So that's nice.
Not that um, I'm gonna be going back anytime soon. I will. So I've got this set in here that basically locks me in and now it can't move. So I have those two settings. Again, I wish the manufacturer would have given more stops. Um, that would have just been so nice. I'm glad that I was able to get these there and that is awesome. I am super thrilled. Couple bolts tapped in and we got ourselves some stops. And I just used this, uh, my tap set here that I just picked it up at Lowe's, you know, years ago. So if you're looking for a cheap and easy cobalt, um, this is an SAE set, so not metric. Okay, just to recap, this first set of bolts that I put in, that is for me using everyday 4x8 sheets with no scoring blade, with the garage shut. That second set of bolts that you can't see, that is for using the scoring blade, at which time I will open the garage. Having the fence set up in this far position right now allows me to use 10 foot or 10 and a half foot uh, cuts, of which I have to open up the garage in order to accomplish. I'm not gonna use the saw with the fence in that back position unless I'm actually cutting longer pieces. Normally it's four by eight sheets, so I'm gonna keep it in the four by eight position, which is where the piece is right here. One more thing I need to do to my shop before I can start working is uh, I need to um, cut away some of this charging area because this is a 10 foot board coming through here and you can see it hits it. I left this room here specifically for 10 foot boards. Okay, this is it with 10 footers coming through and that's totally fine. Totally doable to grab all my stuff. Plenty of room back there. So this is set up for 10 footers or whatever, the biggest, you know. That's it. It. I'm not touching the wall and I'm full extension. Now you see why I had to move those. All right. Very cool. So I wanted to just show you guys if it's possible to have a big 10 and a half foot slider in a standard two car garage. And I know that I've got a tandem part, but the saw is basically in a two car garage. And as you can see, it is, it is possible to have it. And I just want these videos to help you if you guys are trying to figure out if you should buy one or if you could have one. Now I know some people might wanna have the fence in the forward position and some would have them in the back position. I'm keeping mine in the forward position for right now and mostly it's gonna be set up for the eight foot long four by eights. Um, I don't think I'll be changing that for 10 foot unless I'm actually cutting 10 foot. But for right now, it's gonna be just like this and it fits perfectly. So I hope these videos are helping. Stay tuned for scenes for the next one. All right, I thought I would uh, change things up a little bit and show you guys a sneak peek at the next episode. I've got some pretty cool things happening. I want you guys to try to figure out what it is that I'm showing you here. I'm sure most of you could figure it out, but I thought it would be fun just to kind of show you guys little clips. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned.